Hello and welcome to Hadfield Education's Good to Great webinar series where I interview the leading head teachers and education specialists in the UK and talk to them in terms of their experiences and paths to their current successes. Um, today I'm joined by Alex Wilson who is the headmistress at, uh, at Hull uh, Collegiate School uh, in East Ridings in Yorkshire. Um, so good afternoon Alex, how are you? Good afternoon, I'm very well, thank you. Excellent, excellent. So, Alex, what I'd like to do is always start by just finding out uh, what actually took you into, into teaching and into education. So, I think it was something that was always with me. I think even going through school, I always knew I wanted to go into teaching. And um, so I, I followed a fairly traditional route um, from school to university to PGCE um, and then in, back into schools. And where else did you initially um, train and, and where was your first first job? Okay, so I did my PGC, my teacher training at Cambridge. Um, and my first role was actually in a boarding school down in Berkshire. Um, so it was an all girls full boarding I lived in um, and it was full on 24 seven, three weeks at a time. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a great um, launch into teaching. Sounds, sounds intense. Yes, it was a bit, um, but hugely fun and actually getting to know the pupils in a completely different context, obviously outside the classroom was, was good as well. Sure. And in terms of your initial learnings uh, and moulding of your, um, your teaching styles, um, mm -hmm. what, what, were your, what were your big sort of learns within the first couple of years of teaching? I think because of the subject areas that I teach, so I'm, I graduated in theology and history and for most of my career have taught both religious studies including philosophy of religion um, and history and I think the, the biggest thing for me was learning how to um, deliver discursive lessons and actually to give the pupils space to have those discussions and to not be afraid sometimes to you know where we go off the syllabus or where a, a discussion takes an interesting turn um, and not feeling all the time that you have to stick to you know, a very uh, directed lesson plan. And who moulded your um, style? Who were, who were your biggest influences in the early stages? I think there were a couple of other staff that I worked with um, fairly early on who I really admired. I obviously did quite a lot of lesson observations in the early days and just watching them in terms of the, the level of confidence and how relaxed they were in a classroom was, was really what, what moulded that for me. And in terms of successes, did you have any particular like early, early stage successes with your teaching? Um, yes, I, I think my, the, one of the proudest moments was um, in uh, year three of teaching. That was my first A-level cohort to actually go through. So I started teaching them in my second year. The end of my third year, my first A-level cohort that went through, every single one of them went off to read theology at university, Brilliant. which, you know, I, I, I think that said quite a lot about how much they'd enjoyed what, what we'd been doing together. So. Excellent. And in terms of the next step for you, uh, where, where did that take you? So I then um, moved in, into a day school. I moved from that boarding school in Berkshire to a large London day school, very academic school. Um, it happened to be the school I'd been to as a child. Um, and you know, going back there sort of 10 years after I'd left school um, to join a staff room where the staff, many of whom had taught me when I was younger, um, was, was an interesting learning curve. Um, and that's where I spent the next 17 years. Fantastic. And how did you um, settle into that environment? Because that must have been quite unnerving in, in some respects. It was, I mean, having, you know, walking into the staff room for the first time where obviously as a child that had been a room you never went near and using first names of teachers, it was quite daunting, but actually they were so welcoming that I very quickly settled in. And it was such a busy school that actually you just have to get on with it really and, and uh, you know, throw yourself into it. And so in, in terms of the, 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 the path there, 
is, th is that where you took a, a what was the next stage you take a head of department role so yeah i um i went there as a classroom teacher um four years later i took over as head of department um and then uh, a few years further on i became deputy head and then um, head of school which was a sort of senior deputy role um, and then in my last term before i moved up to yorkshire i was the acting head there so Excellent. And in terms of, of taking a head of department role, how did you um, build, um, a, you know, a successful team? What did you what did you put in place? Um, I think for me, it was looking at what we were actually teaching across the school and looking for particular subject areas um, and courses that we were running and appointing subject specialists in those areas. Um, I mean, I was very fortunate in the school that I was in that we had um, the money and the resources to be able to employ um, really high quality staff. Um, and we are also, you know, being in London, we attracted a very high caliber of staff too. Um, but I think it's getting the people, you know, really confident subject specialists who are passionate about their subject rather than, um, you know, worrying too much about sort of sure. the, the sciencey side of teaching, if you like. Sure. And what were your what were your achievements within um, being a department head? Um, well, for many years we had the best results in one of the top schools in the country. Um, certainly at A level, um, we had over eighty five percent A star at A level every year. So I, you know, we were academically very successful. Um, we were also, um, given we were in an academic day school, to have two thirds of the year group taking our subject for GCSE, given that it was religious studies, which um, I know some parents don't always value it at the same level as something, say, like history. Sure. Um, but for me, it was the fact that the subject had that credibility within that very high achieving school. Brilliant. And then what took you into, into senior leadership? Um, I, I just sort of felt ready for the next step. Um, I, so I was appointed a pastoral deputy. I'd, I'd always been very keen on the pastoral side of school. Um, and I, I, the, the role happened, happened to come up really. And um, I knew I ultimately wanted to run my own school and this seemed a natural step. And, and to be able to... Sorry, I was just going to say, was that something that was always, always in the, the back of your mind that you, you did always aspire to be a head teacher? I did, yes. Um, yes, it was something I always really wanted to do, um, having sort of, you know, worked with some incredibly inspirational heads. Fantastic. So tell me about the, the, um, the step up. Um, what sort of challenges did you find there? Um, well, I think I probably had one of the the best steps up in some ways, but having um, a term at a school that I've been at for most of my life um, as an acting head. So it allowed me to sort of step up and experience life as a head somewhere where you know people trusted me and I kind of knew how everything worked and was able to try things out a little bit um, before moving into a school where um, where I was completely new. Um, so I, I think I was just, you know, the timing of that was very fortunate. Um, but I think, you know, when you, you step up to being ahead, the suddenly everything being on your shoulders. I mean, I, 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 I was given a huge amount of responsibility as a deputy. I was allowed to take the lead on things that I know many deputies weren't. And that's not saying anything about me. It was the style of, of headship that my head had had and she very much believed in empowering her team and preparing them for the next step. Um, so I think for me, it had been a process from the moment I became a deputy, I almost felt I, felt I was being shaped for the next step of my career. And in terms of, of the difference from being a deputy or a head of school, um, what did you feel was, was, was the, the, the difference? Did you, did you feel again, um, from the way in which you'd been um, trained and, and supported, did, did you feel that, that that benefited you becoming a head teacher? Def very much so. It definitely benefited me. Um, I felt 
confident that I knew all the challenges that were going to come up. I may not have actually dealt with them personally, yeah. but I'd certainly been involved in conversations, for example, about you know writing budgets or um, you know I was allowed to lead on things like high-profile media cases. Um, I think the, the experience I'd been given meant that actually within a sort of school context, there were very few things I hadn't at least had an insight into, even if I hadn't been responsible directly for them. And what advice would you give to any sort of aspiring heads, uh, currently assistant head or deputy head in school? I would say um, try and gain as much experience as you can of the different areas of school leadership. So if you're a, an academic deputy, make sure that you don't just become you sort of you know, stuck on the academic side, you know, go spend time with the pastoral team and learn about you know, safeguarding and, and, and pastoral care in schools. Equally, um, you know, go and spend time with the bursa or the business manager and, and find out of exactly what goes into um, constructing a budget and that sort of thing. Um, I was, we were certainly very much trained that at any point were we to be rotated within the, the senior team that we could step into each other's shoes and I think that was a really wise um, way of training people up for headship that you, you know, you, whilst we had our, if I want to almost use a sort of cabinet analogy, we all had our sort of portfolios that we were responsible for, but at any one time we were across what each other were responsible for too in terms of knowing what was going on and being part of the discussions around those areas. Brilliant. And in terms of um, within school now, what, what successes have you had, initiatives or, or um, what happens? Because something that I did notice um, within your school and in particular on your school website, there's an awful lot of um, mindfulness and, and well-being, um, mm -hmm. which obviously in, in current um, circumstances is quite, you know, at the forefront of um, employment and employability. Yes. So I was fortunate when I joined here that there was a real focus on well-being, um, not only just for the children, but actually the staff well-being as well. Um, and I mean, that's thanks to a very strong pastoral team. Um, they're absolutely second to none, I have to say. Um, but the, I think, it, you know, the, the pastoral care and the fact that we very much encourage children to speak out, they feel comfortable being, um, a, a, a smallish school I mean whilst we're over 600 in total you know in, within the senior school we're, we're relatively small yeah. and it means that every child is known by name and is known as an individual um, and I think that has been instrumental in making sure that we're able to cater for them as individuals rather than as year nine or or as a group yeah and um sorry go on no, I was no I was just saying in terms in terms of the the staff well-being Mm -hmm. it did seem that there was um, there was quite a, an emphasis and, and a focus on that um, mm -hmm. what what initiatives do you run so we have um, so for any new staff joiners that we have a, a new staff supper close to the beginning of the autumn term where all the staff go along um, we have um, staff you know, Christmas parties they sound sort of silly little things um, but for example you know if I have a member of staff who has a child who's um, a child is graduating or who has something, um, you know, an important milestone in their life. I try to facilitate them being able to be there for that. Um, I uh, tend to try to be flexible with people, um, perhaps with young children, so that if that they are free towards the end of the day, they may be able to, to go and pick up young children occasionally from school um, and that sort of thing. And just those little things. Um, seem to make quite a, an impact on the staff and they've certainly been commented on. Um, definitely, yeah, definitely. I think, I think that's um, it's certainly something that, I th if you get that right, um, you, your, your staff are, are considerably happier, aren't mm -hmm. they? Um, yeah. They feel bought into and they feel supported. Um, mm -hmm. If you could change anything within the education setup and system, what, what would you change? Ooh, good question. Um, I think I would I would try to um, put more emphasis on subject passion and teachers being able to teach subjects and, and being less bogged down in terms of syllabuses and specifications and sort of almost hoop jumping. 
Sure. Um, you know, I, I would like to think that my history teachers are training up the next level, you know, the next generation of historians rather than just teaching them to pass GCSE history. Um, so I would want to allow a degree of freedom within the curriculum, within timetables for teachers to inspire pupils with a love of subjects. Excellent. And in terms of um, advice to um, an NQT or somebody who's, who's thinking about going into teaching now, what would you give them? I would say go and do some observation and look at a different range of schools and get a feel for the sort of school that you might be comfortable in. Um, I mean, there's such a range of schools out there um, and different people's characters perhaps might suit different institutions. But I would also say if you are passionate about what you have read at university and you want to instill that into the next generation, go for it. Um, because actually there's no more um, satisfying career. I don't think, not that I've experienced of anything else, but for me, it's very much, you know, it's been about that, um, that subject inspiration, really. Brilliant. And if you could change anything, uh, you know, click of a finger um, where, where school is concerned, what, what would that be? My, the current school I'm in at the moment? Yeah. Um, I think I would update some facilities more quickly than, than perhaps, you know, obvious normal uh, financial planning would allow for. Um, we, you know, we're a, a incredibly strong in terms of things like drama at school. I would love to have a, a theatre here. Um, and so, you know, rather than wait a couple of years to, to build up funding for that, I, you know, if I could click my fingers, I'd have a new theatre. Fantastic. And in terms of um, your outside of, of school, what kind of what kind of interests do you have? OK, so I love cooking. Um, so that's how I tend to unwind. Um, so I, 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 I love uh, cooking even during the week. I will always take time out to do that. Um, and then in the holidays, I mean, this was also part of the reason for moving to Yorkshire. Um, in the holidays, we, we like to be outside. Um, so I particularly enjoy sea kayaking um, and um, you know, just being outside in the open air generally, really. Yeah, there are some um, good locations for, for that um, around Hull, aren't there? There are, you know, so where we are, we're sort of 10 or 15 minutes to the coast and there's a, you know, a huge coastline here, um, varying from sort of chalky cliffs right down to, you know, to sandy beaches. So we're very lucky. Yeah, nice part of the world. Very nice. And in terms of book, what, what book are you currently reading at the moment? That's a good question. I'm currently reading a book by uh, somebody called Winifred Holtby. Um, it's a bit of a classic. It's called South Riding. It, um, essentially, it's a book set in this part of the country um, by somebody from, from this part of the country. And it's about a, a, a headmistress who... Um, oh, this is going to sound such a cliche. It's about a headmistress who moved up from London to teach at a school in Yorkshire um, and um, you know, tried to do her thing up here. So I'm enjoying that very much. And how does it compare? Uh, what, to my story? Yeah. Um, there are some quite surprising simil um, similarities. <laughs> but of course, it's, um, you know, it's about a century ago, so not too many. <laughs> okay. And what's your favourite uh, interview question? Oh, gosh. Um, I can tell you my least favourite. <laughs> um, oh, favourite interview question. I think probably the one about um, something that you're most proud of or, you know, a success or a, a pupil or a, something that you've dealt with that you're most proud of. Sure. Um, okay. And in terms of holiday destinations, where, where do you like to go away to? Oh, I'm very unambitious when it comes to holidays. Um, I, t I like to holiday in the UK. Um, so I, you know, I've, we've, we camp as a family, we do a lot of camping. And so we, we've been all over England doing that and we have a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, I have traveled to the Far East. I have, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time in France um, in previous years, but actually I, for me, there's nothing better than getting out into the British countryside. It's quite interesting. The more heads that I speak to in terms of, you know, what they do during, you know, holiday time and break time, the more 
I see that that do prefer staycation and staying local uh, or within the UK at least anyway. Mm. So it's quite interesting. I'd, I'd have thought that you'd have just wanted to have, have cut free and, and, you know, got as far away from school as possible. No, I, I mean, I think because I camp and, you know, we tend to do it in, at a fairly basic level in terms of, you know, we don't have electricity or anything. So when the phone dies, it really dies. So for me, I do feel quite cut off and, and able to really switch off from school. That does sound good, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. To get away from technology would, would be yeah. a, a brilliant thing. Um, <laughs> in terms of technology, um, what, what's your favourite um, app, app that you use within school, within your work? Oh, gosh, I'm probably the very last person you should ask that question to. I'm a total Luddite. Um, uh, I probably couldn't answer that, to be honest. Um, it's something we're looking at as a school at the moment and looking at whether we might want to sort of develop more of a digital strategy um, because we are, I would say it, it is an area we need to do work on. Okay, okay. Uh, and in terms of um, if you weren't a teacher, what career path do you think you would have taken? I probably would have done something like law had I had I not been a teacher. Something sort of fairly traditional and sensible, probably. Okay. And who's been the biggest influence on your teaching career? Probably the head I worked for in London. Um, both in terms of her as a, as a leader and then as a, a sort of a direct boss when I was on her senior team. Brilliant. And in terms of, of, of life, who's been the biggest influence in your, in, in your life? My dad. Absolutely no doubt about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's not with us anymore, but um, he was very much my sort of role model and hero as I was growing up. So. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much for, for your time. Um, is there anything in particular um, that you're currently working on? Any initiatives within school that, that people need to know about? Um, I think probably the only thing that, that we have launched recently that is going sort of better than I expected, so I will share this with you, is we've launched an academic lecture program um, for the staff. So the staff are giving lectures on areas that they are interested in beyond the syllabus that they teach. Um, so I launched it with a, a lecture on the history of clocks, um, a little bit niche, I know, but um, but actually, this, you know, lots and lots of staff have signed up for these these talks. So every couple of weeks, a different member of staff will be giving a talk for the staff, but pupils are invited along as well. And it's really nice to have that sort of joint sort of adult children time discussing some some academic things. Fantastic. Fantastic. And in terms of how um, can people get hold of you? What's the what's the best way for them to communicate with you? I just contact the school um, either by phone um, or um, via the there's a, an, e an email link on the school website. And I'm happy to, to talk to anyone who would like to have a further conversation. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, what I'll do, I'll put links into the um, into the video and also into the um, the role below. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, thank you ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it and, and great insight into uh, being a head, headmistress in you know career today. Thank you very much. No, no problem. Take care. Bye. <laughs>